Hello friends, I am Sunil Ranjan and I am an English teacher and if you are preparing for civil services that is the top government job in India then you are at the right place. Now this poem small scale reflections on a great house by A.K. Ramanujim is about life in South India. Now Atti paid Krishna Swami Ramanujan popularly known as A.K. Ramanujan was born on 16th March 1929 in Mysore, India. He was an Indian poet and scholar of Indian literature who wrote in both English and Kannada and his poetry is known for its thematic and formal engagement with modernist transnationalism. He argued strongly for giving local non-standard dialects their due. Though he wrote widely in a number of genres, his writings stand out as wonderful works of striking originality and sophistication. In 1976, the government of India awarded him the Padma Shri. As an Indo-American writer, he had the experience of the native as well as the western way of life. His poems such as Conventions of Despair reflected his views on the cultures and conventions of Eastern and Western society. A.K. Ramanujan died in Chicago in America on 13th July 1993. The collected poems of A.K. Ramanujan received the Sahitya Academy Award by the Government of India in 1995. Now friends, as the title goes, the poem by Ramanujan tells what the poet thinks about a house in a village of South India. He speaks about the traditional way of life in the place and people and the family living in the house was no exception to it. In the description of the house there is always humor running through the poem. The phrase great house has been used by the poet to make the title interesting as well as pointing to many unusual things related to family members living in the house. If he does not use any sarcasm but willingly accepts such houses with people following a particular way of life. However, the poem ends on a poignant note when the dead body of a family member is brought back from the border in a military truck. Now, the poem begins, first I will read out a few lines and then I will give the explanation. So the poem begins here. Sometimes I think that nothing that ever comes into this house goes out. Things that come in every day to lose themselves among other things. Lost long ago among other things lost long ago. Now the explanation is the poem begins on a first person note when the poet points to a house and says that anything that comes into the house never goes out. In a very plain language, the poet says that things that come daily into the house lose themselves among other things already lost long time back. Now, the lines that follow are Lame wandering cows from nowhere have been known to be tethered, given a name, encouraged to get pregnant in the broad daylight of the street under the elder's supervision. The girls hiding behind windows with holes in them. Now here the poet presents a very real picture of rural India. When he begins to describe the lame wandering cows that have been tied to houses by people and given a name, the villagers have arranged for those cows to get pregnant during daylight under the supervision of elders. The girls inside their homes look out through the holes of the windows of their houses. Now, coming to the following lines. Unread library books usually mature in two weeks and begin to lay a row of little legs in the ledgers for fines as silver fish in the old man's office room breed dynasties among long legal words in the succulence of Victorian parchment. Now, the explanation is, 
Moving further, the poet goes on describing a house in which there are books borrowed for two weeks from the library but have never been read. As they have been lying unused, silver fish, the silver white insects, have laid a row of eggs for which fine will have to be paid for damage to the book when returned. The actions of the silver fish are further explained when the poet compares such a state to the breeding of similar eggs in the moisture gathered books of old lawyer's office that have the cover of high quality Victorian parchment. Now, moving further, the lines are Neighbors dishes brought up with the greasy sweets they made all night the day before yesterday. For the wedding anniversary of a god, never leave the house they enter, like the servants, the phonographs, the epilepsies in the blood. Now, the explanation is, the poet says that in the great house, dishes were greasy, sweets are sent by the neighbors. Those sweets were made by neighbors all night the day before yesterday to celebrate the wedding anniversary of a god. Once those dishes enter the house, they are never returned. They are like the record players or the epilepsies in the blood that continue to stay stuck inside. Now moving further, coming to the text. Sons-in-law who quite forget their mothers but stay to check accounts or teach arithmetic to nieces or the women who come as wives from houses open on one side to rising suns on another to the setting, accustomed to wait and to yield to monsoons in the mountain's calendar, beating through the hanging banana leaves. Now the explanation is, the poet then speaks of the sons-in-law of the family in the great house, who often seem to have forgotten their own mothers and had chosen to stay in that house to check accounts of the family or teach arithmetic to their nieces. There are women married into the family of that house who see the rising sun from one side of the house or as they are accustomed, they check the calendar and wait for the monsoon and when the time comes, they watch the rain beating through the hanging banana leaves. Now, coming to the lines of the poem, and also anything that goes out will come back possessed and often with long bills attached, like the hooped bales of cotton shipped off to invisible Manchesters and brought back milled and folded. For a price, cloth for our days, middle class loins, and muslin for our richer knights. Now the explanation is, the poet describes further that the only things that come back to the house are the items with long bills attached to them. They are the rounded bales of cotton which are shipped off to textile mills in Manchester in England and come back manufactured in the form of clothes, shaped and folded for a price. Those clothes are for the middle class. Some of them are made of muslin the delicate and thin cotton material. The poet says that clothes made of such material are worn to set one's mood to in luxury, to enjoy the beautiful and pleasant nights. Now, coming to the point further, letters mailed have a way of finding their way back with many redirections to long addresses and red ink marks earned in Teluvela and Sial code. And ideas behave like rumors. Once casually mentioned somewhere, they come back to the door as prodigies, born to prodigal fathers, with eyes that vaguely look like our own. Like what uncle said the other day, that every plotinus we read is what some Alexander looted between the malarial rivers. Now, the explanation is, the other things that return to the great house are the letters written and mailed with wrong addresses. They are mailed by the postal department with they are mailed back by the postal department with red ink marks from Tiruvalla, a town in Kerala, or from Sialkot, a city in undivided India. The poet further says that ideas spread like rumors. Once they are casually mentioned, 
anywhere they come back to the same door where they had been talked about they are like extraordinary things born to wasteful fathers whose eyes do not look like those of us as uncle said sunday that every book of the roman philosopher plotinus we read tells about the wealth looted by alexander the greek god who died of malaria now moving further a beggar once came with a violin to croak out a prostitute song that our voiceless cook sang all the time in our backyard nothing stays out daughters get married to short lived idiots sans suranave come back in grand children who recite sanskrit to approving old men or bring betel nuts for visiting uncles who keep them gaping with anecdotes of unseen fathers or to bring ganges water in a copper pot for the last of the dying ancestors rattle in the throat now the explanation of these lines is the poet speaks of a beggar who came once with a violin and sang a prostitute song that was often badly sung by his cook in the backyard of his house nothing stays out of the house as daughters get married to stupid fellows and come back having felt cheated sons of the family who run away come back married with their children with the realization that they carried fancy and they had foolishly cherished that before running away from the house their children recite sanskrit slogans to the approving elderly men in the family or bring betel nuts for visiting uncles children often wonder when uncles tell them stories of their dead fathers those children bring ganges water in a copper pot for the last rites of pouring the holy water into the dying throat of old men in the family now moving further and this is the last stanza and though many times from everywhere recently only twice once in 1943 from as far as the sahara half gnawed by desert foxes and lately from somewhere in the north a nephew with stripes on his shoulder was called an incident on the border and was brought back in plane and train and military truck even before the telegrams reached on a perfectly good chatty afternoon well the explanation is the poet says that earlier many returned to the house from different places but recently twice only when two went out and returned dead once it was in 1943 when one returned dead from the sahara desert as he had been half eaten by the desert foxes and quite recently from somewhere in the north a nephew who was in the army was brought back dead by plane train and finally by a military truck a clash had taken place on the border which took the nephew's life his body had reached before the telegram reached on a pleasant afternoon when all family members were chatting so friends here i come to the end of the poem with the explanation and if you are interested you may choose to subscribe to my channel and i'll be coming up with final videos for you from time to time thank you